Hello viewers and welcome back to uh, Gear City with me, Pipi Choo Choo. This will be episode 3 and unfortunately we have to uh, sort of skip into the future by, by some time here. And now it is the 6th month inside 1908 and currently we're making, we're still making a profit and we have 2.7 million inside the bank. So um, I had to skip forward here by say a small amount of time mainly due to the fact that I was doing some testing with various different say aspects of the game and for whatever reason my safe file leads to this file over here which um which well actually this is the auto save file the the main save file actually leads to the 10th month of 1908 which i don't believe we were on which is the thing so that's it's kind of odd in that um the auto save file here is updating sort of oddly with the main save file also odd upgrading so for for the sake of like you know preserving what's what continuity is sort of left we'll just sort of start off here um overall for you guys it won't say be like a major issue I mean there's still a ton of playtime left inside the game and at the same time I mean overall it's honestly just a very insignificant especially due to the fact that still we're making tons of profits and really going forwards like that so uh, namely I was messing around with a uh, production um, just designing new vehicles research amongst things and um, trying to say uh, change the amount of um, wages that we pay for people and that has actually caused a few strikes inside the past here. So uh, starting off, I want to show you guys uh, rather why first and foremost I need to do this. Um, in this time of research I was mainly just sort of testing around things and one of the things that we want to do immediately is that we want to uh, re-tack up our say production factory by retooling it and this is because currently I believe the uh, the amount of cars it can build right now is uh, is using like really dated material uh, Technology, so we retooled it. It'll be much more efficient in the amount of um, things it can build at one time, and that'll give us this produ production unoptimized message over here. So that's all that that means, and we'll have to reset that later on. But in the coming months, we'll actually set up, say, a few new lines of uh, cars, so it say wouldn't be that big of an issue. So um, when, I, when I say that. Um, it sort of uh, like retooling your factory does say optimize them slightly. What I mean by that is over the years more better production sort of optimizations come into play and with that said currently we are producing 340 cars using three lines of work seven lines of production and 578 employees if I say click on this slightly and just drag it back and forth it should give us a new number so it looks like it will produce say slightly more cars using the current um, technology and of course later on when the retooling is done that'll increase even more like that so um, apart from that element I'll show you guys what I've been working on and um, later on I'll show you guys one of the problems that I had encountered and I had uh, solved with the help of the sort of uh, the developer here well actually he did <laughs> all of the work I just sort of uh, modified the, the in-game settings there so um, I was making I, I was uh, trying to make a few new uh, say actual car models and I've I made a, a trim model I've made a new car entirely with a with a pretty good overall rating but um, I don't really actually want to sell these right away I'm actually going to end production and just sort of get rid of those uh, those set those sort of designs mainly because I want to continue right off where we had left off aside from let's say the time increase and perhaps the depreciation on our vehicles everything else would be just a effectively the same. And this is because I want to show you guys the, the advanced editor for making these vehicles and yeah that'll be pretty much that. So um, we are effectively back where we have uh, we had been reselling the ad eater type of car and it wasn't say it wasn't doing bad it's actually doing pretty well even uh, right now and I'll show you guys the sales uh, reports in graphical form. So yeah, this is the graph for it. We were selling that one model of car for a fellow longest time, and as you can see here, um, right until 1904, this 1904 jump was due to the fact that, uh, if you guys remember, we had upgraded those factories. And as you can see here, there it was a there's a slightly gradual, say, a slump in the amount of cars we were pretty much selling there, and then there was a bit of a, a bit of a rather harsh sort of sharp jump down because of the strikes. But now it should be going back up, seeing as how we're making a uh, 109 uh, sort of thousand dollars here right so um, going from there 
we're gonna hop back into this design panel and as you saw there we uh, we had a pretty decent car 20 quality car so right now we want to make a new one something that's comparable and we'll do the advanced designs right there for it so we're gonna go to chassis we're gonna build an entirely new chassis entirely new engine and gearbox to sustain it and we'll really just go on that angle right there and uh, yeah pretty much that so um, the game has advanced further in time meaning that a few more of these options will appear and the general idea behind building some of these advanced parts is that you sort of effectively pick out the archetype of whatever you want to build here so for example there are different chassis types or rather frames for it, like a like the ladder frame and the the carriage frame and these are effectively just modeling technological in, uh, advances and different techniques so um at the very start of the game our ant eater car the first design we had was based off of this chassis um this carriage frame and these are effectively the game will actually give you quite inform uh pretty uh well informed sort of briefings over here about the things and um, these are effectively early sort of horse carriages converted they're very cheap but they're also very inefficient so now since we've uh, sort of gone forwards in time we can build this one now the ladder ladder frame this one is still decently cheap but it's also strong at the same time and the first car that we had built uh, durability would say something that we were lacking on however this thing isn't say very good at handling performance but I mean either way this will be better than uh, what we had before so again I mean technology Technology is pretty important we want to tech up here so we'll go with that we'll make a forward uh, engine front wheel drive sort of thing see and so this is again another uh, modern sort of invention at the time and this one it's it's very cheap rather rather re relatively cheap to say manufacture and just generally make and it's pretty compact as well making it rather nice however say they are below uh, average in their performance which to us I mean making say a cheapo car isn't really the biggest say problem and we're just going to put down two suspension um, attachments. Quite honestly, to me, there's um, there's not, say, too much uh, variance inside the first few of these that you get. And again, I mean, all early cars were pretty bumpy on the road. And these are just slightly different variants of cheap but very ineffective um, suspension systems. And I think the trailing arm is the latest one. It's more complex and it's expensive, but it's slightly better than uh, the other systems that we have. So we will, um, I think we just call this chassis the stock. Oh, there we go, we'll call that the stock. And that'll bring up to this panel. And quite honestly, I mean, the, the actual blueprint background here is mostly just filler. All we really have to keep track of is the, the chassis quick details over here and the ratings and all that stuff here. Actually, the game will actually give us this small advice uh, sort of bracket right here in the bottom sort of uh, right corner of the screen. And this is a pretty useful thing to gauge how your car will do, or rather how your module and car will do later on. Although it has the tendency to give you, uh, say, advice to build, say, a, a pretty expensive car for what it's worth and with that said um, it, you might not want to follow it to the teeth but definitely keep in advice keep its advice in mind right so yeah um, again all we really have to keep track of here rather the things that I, I like to keep track of here is the frame weight the, the maximum engine size that you can attach and of course the rating meters the the actual estimated unit cost and the amount that it costs to design this particular uh, thing here so um, what we can do is that we can click all of the buttons that down here to open up these different slider panels and you effectively use these sliders to tell your engineers what type of chassis uh, you want to go for here and you can pick from the various different um, things so let's just go from the from the left to the right here and we'll just pick things out like such so um, starting off frame dimensions is something that I don't say particularly care for so this will be a pretty fast one to do um, overall it'll just be say a different say different settings over here the main things that I want to keep track of here is uh, the the maximum supported engine is the big thing um, and again the game gives you pretty helpful so, sort of like tool tips about what you want for this and I think what we uh, what we want to go here for here is something that's slightly leaner so lighter I don't want to keep the weight maybe around 140 145 kilograms um, but I think the first thing I'll check down is down here the maximum supported engine width uh, overall I want to make say a pretty small ro but robust engine here so I'm gonna give an engine dimension of I'm, I'm taking a look at the um, the inches over here so I think we'll go with 
28 by 24, which sounds pretty good. And of course, I believe this will lower the weighting, or at least I hope it will. No, no, it doesn't actually lower the weighting. It'll just change the maximum sort of supported engine size. But at the same time, larger space will allow larger engines to be used in this chassis. Um, so perhaps that doesn't actually affect anything else apart from the engine size? Don't really know. Let's see. Looks like it'll increase the estimated unit cost slightly. I was under the impression that this would actually also factor into, say, performance and weighting or perhaps storage. But uh, in that case, we'll just go with, say, decent width and decent uh, length like that. And going from there, the main thing, well, actually, no, we don't really need, say, that much uh, width because we're, I plan on using straight engines for this. So we'll go with that. Um, in terms of the rest of the stuff, I think we'll just keep it as is. Um, but I guess we'll have to reduce, say, the weighting here. Let's see. I think 161 is what we'll uh, try to get it down to. We we'll want to keep that decently low, while at least keeping the design cost low as well. So right, we'll go with that. And overall, we can just sort of drag these, uh, say, sliders to make this vehicle slightly better. And I'm going to focus on stability, ride comfort, and braking. Because again, this will be more of a mass market car. Something that we can use to just sort of uh, sell to the, to the masses, pretty much. Something that'll make us cash. And with that said, we want to reduce production costs as well. So we'll try to make this something that has decent quality, not say too much. And say one of the things that I found to really sort of make your car say slightly more cheaper for very little say um, say negative thing is that you can lower you you can lower the, the technologies and the manufacturing techniques section over here to to virtually nil, and it quite honestly won't affect your car say too much. It'll affect the design requirements in the manufacturing category, but at the same time, for and the chassis strength, at least uh, for now, at least, it looks like it'll lower the, the design project's cost from right around, say, 200k to right around 130, and it'll decrease the estimated unit costs by a ton. So with that said, I mean, we will just try to do that, and yeah, we'll go from there. And uh, really, moving forwards, we will, of course, uh, increase a few sections over here on the upside to sort of counterbalance the uh, the price drop there. And we'll increase dependability and stuff like that. Again, really just trying to build a mass market car. And with all of those things, we'll hit build. So that will put down a chassis for um, effectively uh, research. And that looks like it'll take, say, five months to can to really build it'll be a fairly lightweight chassis and i believe we, we we can already get the stats from here right so because of what it's worth it has a very high strength compared to what we've had before very high comfort and even though we didn't prioritize on performance it's still pretty better just sort of in general due to the time period and overall i mean it looks like it's a pretty solid thing and it's actually cheaper than the two other ones that i've sort of already built with a lower manufacturing sort of requirement than one of them so that is is very very good right so moving forwards from there we need an engine and a gearbox to sort of go along with it so um, there's a very there's a lot of different engine layouts but in general they they're more say different layouts that uh, factor in say the the cost to produce them versus the compactness of the engine and how much power it gives um, typically for the early portion of the game here these are the two things we'll use was we'll use either a single sort of piston or cylinder engine or alternatively a straight uh, section of engine and the straight is just obviously a, a single engine just multiple multiplied by multiple cylinders. So um, starting off, I actually want to make a very robust engine that we can carry from car to car. And typically, uh, those car engines will be four cylinder engines is what you typically find, um, even today. However, I want to, what I want to do here is that I want to check, say, how big of an engine we can put in here. And I want to make, say, 19 by 25, I have to remember that. And um, I want you to, to sort of build an engine around, say, that those specifications. I don't want this to be, say, something that can last for a long time. And again, the two tips are very helpful. So we'll build a three-cylinder en three engine is a, what I think is a nice sort of balance between different things. 
And effectively, in a straight engine, the more cylinders you have, the more displacement, the bigger it really is, the more power, and the, uh, yeah, that'll be sort of that. For fuel, we can choose between two-stroke and four-stroke fuel. Two-stroke is easier to maintain and to just sort of design with for reliability and all, but it's less uh, effective. We're going to go with four-stroke, and we have the, the choice of picking between two induction systems, meaning how the engine takes in air for its combustion. You can do a supercharger for for um, for for um, what's it called performance right now, but we're going to go with a natural uh, sort of air, just a regular air intake here. And we'll name this engine the... I don't really have any good names right now. We'll name it the... Uh, we'll name it the 200 series engine. Just because, really. And we'll just go from there. And again, we can open up all of these different panels and really focus in, say, various different things that we want the engine to uh, do here. So, right, we'll open these things up. Come on, can I drag this? There we go. And we'll just pick from these four sort of slider categories again. And again, it's really just sort of balancing between prices and various different things. So, uh, A, we want this engine to fit in and we want to give it, say, some decent peak power in terms of torque and, of course, horsepower here. So, currently, this engine is actually really rather small. It's 15 by 11. I remember uh, the ones that we were supposed to have was 9... 29 by 25 so i'll increase the width and and the and the sort of length of the engine to uh to the specifications or at least however however large we can really go here and it looks like the biggest engine we can build right now would be say something that would be 25 by 15 just by increasing the width and length section over here so yeah that'll make the engine easier to design which is one good thing the other thing is that we can also increase the actual displacement um, and the very technical portions of the actual in, in, uh, inside of the engine, uh, which will also increase its size. So I'm going to bump those up slightly. That'll give us more horsepower. However, it'll make the engine harder to design, leading to, say, I believe, more production costs. And I think they scale pretty... Or no, actually, it doesn't scale pretty drastically at this rate. So um, anyhow, we do want a cheaper engine, though. So we'll go with something like that. And in general here, what I think we'll do here is uh, I think we'll also make this, say, a bit of a cheaper engine as well. So we'll do something like that. And actually, let me see how much that factors into estimated unit costs. It won't actually. It'll factor into our, our design costs by quite a bit, though. And the main thing is that we just want to find a nice sort of me uh, mixed port part between, say, project costs, estimated costs, and ratings. So we'll go with something like that. And right now, um, for, for this particular vehicle, again, I want this to be a multiple sort of purpose engine. So I want to increase the amount of revolutions the engine does and the amount of engine torque it has. This will cause more, say, heat. It'll increase the amount of horsepower we get out of it and the sort of the more, more torque out of it at the, at the cost of fuel rating and, re and dependability. So right, we'll do that. And um, then we can go to focus and technology here. Again, I'm going to try to game this. I'm going to lower tech to the very minimum. It's going to affect some of our ratings here, but eh, it's not, say, too bad. So that'll give us a, a marginally cheaper type of thing to produce. And I'm going to lower material quality and component quality so it'll be very cheap to produce. And for focus, I think we'll go for, say, a big focus on dependability. And I'm going to try to aim to make this engine cost 275 to make and below 300k to research. And we'll go with that. And it looks like in advice, this is an average engine. It's not overly powerful, but it'll do its job. And it will pretty much uh, last for, for what it's worth there. So we'll send that over to the design bureau. Let them do it. And for now... I'm just going to get the uh, the game, this is automatic system here, to build us a decently cheap um, sort of gearbox for for what we plan on doing here. So, uh, well, oh no, I suppose we can do that by ourselves. Right, so again, for gearboxes, there aren't, say, too many options. You really just pick the, the type between automatic and manual. Currently, there's only manual, and you really pick up the amount of gears. The more complex it is, as in the more gears it has, the uh, the bigger, the more the more expensive it will be. Uh, the lesser, obviously, the less features there will be. So I think we'll go with a three-gear setup. I think that is pretty much uh, what it's good for there. We'll gear it for generic use, and we'll name it the flat, I guess. Right, so uh, yeah, for for this portion, for the for the gearbox, it's relatively simpler simpler than the other sections. But what we want to do here is uh, because we have a pretty power, I would say a pretty powerful engine at least. 
we want to gear this to uh, for performance sort of focus. Now these focus things is that we have to say we, we can we have the option to increase focus on one section. Probably should have talked about this earlier, but at the same time it makes it so that the the design costs go up very hard because it makes it it makes it a harder job for the, uh, the designer to do its thing there so what i want to go for here is say a not exactly an easy to shift sort of um design but something that's sort of based around the idea of carrying the uh, the, the pretty relatively powerful engine that we have set up here for what it's worth and again, we can lower the uh, the material, the component, and the uh, the technological and manufacturing techniques.